Okay. Our rebate agreement is ready. The next thing is the condition types. That's the key, right? We're going to create just one condition type. Z002. 001 is already taken, so we're going to use 002. And re because a rebate can contain, or rather rebate agreement can contain multiple condition types, we need to assign them via a rebate condition type group, or rather just the condition type group. Creating a condition type group is really easy. You know, Z001, Z002, you can have any name you want. And it's not going to have any controls, right? So there's no by, you know, the hourglass button here. That means that there are no controls. It's just an entry. So just like Z001, we're going to create a Z002 and give it the same customer material rebate group. And then... We have to assign a condition type, an actual rebate condition type to this. It's, it's very similar to a regular pricing condition type, like your pricing, discount or whatnot. But the condition class is going to be C. Right? You can choose quantity or percentage, it's up to you. For now, we're going to choose quantity because we're going to give like, let's say, you know, $10, $20 or $100 per piece. Okay? So that the example that I am doing, the example in the PowerPoint is going to be insane. But you can have percentage, you can have scale, sending, descending, you can have all that stuff. But this is the key. Condition class should be expense reimbursement, C. Unless it is that, it will not act like a rebate condition type. Right? So we are going to create a new condition type, call it Z002, and make it a copy of Z001. Okay, now that this is done, define condition type groups. Let's define a condition type group as a copy of Z001. You could copy it even from 0001. I'm going to call it Z002 and save. We're going to have the same name. Okay, now we're going to create the actual condition type itself. Once that is done, then we can come back and assign that condition type to this group. Condition type group is, I would say, confusing because why are we doing this? Purpose is really internal. It's an SAP internal thing. So there's nothing we can do about that. We just have to do it. It just links a bunch of condition types to a rebate agreement type. That's it. That's all there is to a condition type. So where do we do the condition types themselves? We do that in the condition technique, okay? We're going to do that and then come back here and do the assignment. So first, let's create these condition types. Define condition types. And Z001 or B001, either of them, they're already created, right? Looks like Z002 is taken. So we're going to choose, let's say, Z010 or 020. Because Z002 is taken, we're going to choose Z020. Okay? Now, if you go back inside it, you'll see that the condition class is C. Unless you make that as C, your condition type will behave differently. Right? You already know this. The condition class controls a whole lot of things about a condition type. When you set it to C, you'll see that actually some of the fields are actually gone. We go back to the next one, let's say. You see, this is a standard discount condition type. So there's some control data here. There's some master data. There's changes to be made. But if you go back to Z020, you'll see that most of the controls are gone because those controls are not relevant for rebate condition type. And because we have marked them as C, this condition type, SAP ensured that Things that are not relevant or controls that are not relevant for a rebate condition type are removed. So Z020. Alright, so this is done. But this condition type is actually assigned to the access sequence Z001. Now you can go and create your own condition type, no problem. And then create your own access sequence, no problem. And then create your own condition table, no problem. But since we already have an access sequence that I have created, 
which I'm going to show some screenshots for. I'm going to let it remain as is. But I'll show you how this access sequence is created, what is the condition types, tables, so on and so forth. So let's go back and go to the access sequence, which is this guy right here. This table is cross client, okay. And this is Z001. This is something that I've created yesterday for the purpose of the PowerPoint. So that's something that I've created as a copy of BO01, right? So what I've done is just put a new condition table, customer material combination, right? So I've chosen 001, customer material combination, right? So in case you're wondering why you're seeing so few condition tables, because if you look at a pricing condition table or a discount condition table, you know, this whole screen is going to be filled, right? But over here, we only have like 20 or 15 of them. Why? The reason is simple. In an IDES system, there are not as many rebate condition tables as there are pricing or discount condition tables. And this is the key. Rebate condition tables are different from pricing condition tables. Right? So 001 rebate is different from 001 pricing. Pricing or discount. Right? These tables, like we discussed, sit in KOTE001 as opposed to pricing, which sit in the actual table A001. Right? Although rebates are kind of part of pricing and use pricing a lot, the condition tables, the actual condition tables for rebate, are different than the condition tables for pricing. Okay? So this is something that you'd have to remember, otherwise, you know, you would be lost. All right, and then the fields are mapped very much the same way like pricing. There's no difference. But another key difference here is, if there were more condition tables, you would not click on the exclusive check mark, which you would do in pricing. The reason is simple. Say, for example, in pricing, there are five different condition tables in an access sequence. And when you maintain condition records in, in pricing, when, it, when you create a document, what happens? It looks at the first combination. Is there a price or a discount? If not, it goes to the next. If not, it goes to the next. Say, at the third level of the condition table, it finds a price. It does not go to the fourth, right? It just stops at the third level. And that's what this exclusive flag means, really. When you find a combination in the condition record, stop there. Don't go further. A rebate, on the other hand, is not really exclusive. What do I mean by that? Multiple rebate condition types can apply simultaneously to a single document. And because of that, you don't check the exclusive flag on when you create a rebate access sequence. Because a customer material rebate can apply, a standard material rebate can apply, and maybe a customer group material rebate can apply. There could be multiple rebates that happen simultaneously for a transaction. Because of that, you don't click the exclusive flag on. Okay? Alright, so that is that. We're going to save that. We didn't do any changes, so we're good here. So Z001, we're going to use the same thing. So we have created a Z020 condition type. And we have seen that the exclusive flag is not checked on. And the field mapping is similar. There's no change here. And when I mean no change here, compared to standard pricing condition types. And then, go to your standard pricing procedure or whatever pricing procedure you have created and put in your condition type. We have created Z020, right? So, we're going to remove that and put in Z020. And typically, you'll set this to 24. This is a requirement that ensures that the value does not reflect in the sales document. Instead, it only reflects in the billing document because there could be a difference in quantity. And 
there is always two accounting keys ERB and ERU. One is an accrual account, one is a reserve account. And you don't have to explicitly set it to be statistical. SAP will automatically take care of it. Okay, so you have to put your condition type, set the requirement, set the accounting keys, and that's it. Let's do it. And we're going to use the same pricing procedure RVAA01. Select that, go to control data. Instead of Z001, I'm going to put Z020. Right? Everything else will remain the same. And these are not touched manually, right? So that's why you don't have this enabled to start with manual flag. And we're going to save it. Okay. This is done. So we've modified the pricing procedure. Now we're going to go back to the rebate condition type group and assign the condition type group to the actual condition type. Now this is not a one to one assignment, it can be a one to many. Right? So if there were more condition types that needs to be assigned to the same condition type group, you could do that. Can be assigned to more than one rebate condition types. In this case, we only got one, right? So Z002 against Z020. Okay. This is save. Go back, close this, and go to assign condition types to condition type groups. And we have a Z001 somewhere, right? Just select that, make a copy. And instead of Z001, we're going to put Z0020. This is going to be Z020. Because we didn't have Z002, we are assigning this new condition type Z020. Okay, so far so good, right? And then we have got to assign the condition type group to the agreement itself. Again, these are confusing steps. You know, if you are doing it for the first time, it, it looks a little confusing because we are doing so many things in a very short span of time. But if you do it or rather watch this video a couple of times, at least two or three times, you'll see a pattern to what we are trying to do here. Assign condition type group to rebate agreement type. The one that we have created is Z002. And to that, we're going to assign Z002 condition type group. The one that we have created you now 10 minutes ago. Okay. This is done. Now let's revisit what we have done. You know, all the different configuration steps. Okay. So you have created a rebate agreement Z002, condition type group Z002, condition type Z020, right? We have assigned that to this, we have assigned this to that and as part of the condition type itself in pricing, we have, we have used the standard 001 condition type, right? This is based on customer material combination we have done that and and that's that's this part right the access sequence part and then we have maintained z020 as a condition type with condition class c expense and investment and then instead of that we have put in z020 here set the requirement of 24 set the acc accrual keys and account determination is something that we need not do because it's standard. Most of the time it's standard. If not, if you want it to go to different accounts, you can very well go to VKOA and then set it according to your accounting requirements. I'm not going to bother you too much with that. And step number seven, this is something that we have not done. But you can very well do it if you are using your own sales or your own billing doc, right? I'm going to use F2 standard billing and 1000 standard sales org. And these are already enabled by default. Okay. So we have done our part. Now let's test it. 